Are you a patient person? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. In the late 19th century, new and bold ideas from Europe, including biblical criticism and the theories of Charles Darwin, challenged traditional ways of thinking about religion. A small minority of people concentrated in the intelligentsia abandoned belief in God and became known as free thinkers. Today, their worldview is typically known as secularism. In the United States, the foremost proponent of secularism was a former politician and lawyer named Robert Ingersoll, known to his admirers as the great agnostic and to his critics as Robert Ingersoll. Ingersoll barnstormed the country, a circuit rider for the secular set. In New York, tickets to his lectures commanded the awesome sum of one dollar. Scalpers reportedly could get as much as two dollars. On stage, Ingersoll spoke without notes, launching into a delivery that was at once riveting and bitingly witty. His most famous lecture was a two and a half hour speech titled The Gods, which he delivered in New York in 1880. Outside the theater, members of the American Bible Society handed out free copies of the King James Version. The very fact that the event received serious media coverage speaks of Ingersoll's importance. For Ingersoll, gods were the invention of the mind and imagination of man. One night after an inflammatory speech in which he severely attacked man's faith in the Savior, he dramatically took out his watch and said, I'll give God a chance to prove that He exists and is almighty. I challenge Him to strike me dead within five minutes. First there was silence, then people became uneasy. Some left the hall, unable to take the nervous strain of the occasion, and one woman fainted. At the end of the allotted time, the atheist exclaimed derisively, See, there is no God. I am still very much alive. After the lecture, a young fellow said to a Christian lady, Well, Ingerson certainly proved something tonight. Her reply was memorable. Yes, he did, she said. He proved God isn't taking orders from atheists tonight. The story was told later to another famous man of the time named Joseph Parker who said, And did the American think he could exhaust the patience of God in five minutes? In today's first reading, the Israelites have become impatient with their condition of wandering in the desert for years. They have repeatedly asked to pass through Edom to quickly get into the promised land, but they were refused entry. They had just won victory over Arad, a territory lying between the Dead Sea and the Mediterranean. But Moses was determined not to engage Edom in battle. People forgot that their victory over Arad was granted by the Lord. Their impatience led them to blaspheme Yahweh, reject Moses, and complain about the meager and bland manna which fell every day as God's gift to them. They wished they had never left Egypt as slaves, but they realized their folly and sought forgiveness from God through Moses. The bronze serpent mounted on a pole, as specified by God to Moses, healed those bitten by snakes sent to punish them. We reflect today on our own impatience with things, people, and situations. This has often brought us into conflict with others and ourselves. Many accidents on the road, for instance, are caused by impatience. Road rage has left many people dead and many more families grieving. Our patience is tested at the start of the day when we hurriedly get into the car for an appointment and our spouse or children do not share our sense of urgency. As the seconds tick waiting for them, we experience anxiety, tension, and frustration. But even if we are not in a hurry, we can still fidget in our seat, honk the horn several times, maybe even curse at the tardiness of others. We can take on another perspective though. We can be more patient. We can probably take our mind off our brewing emotions and just be more sensitive to the surroundings. We can take out the car owner's manual and explore the pages for things we have tended to ignore before and learn more about our car. More importantly, we can say a little prayer while waiting. What a great way to bring our mind and heart to pause. God will bless us with a perspective to process this situation better, helping us to gain insights on things we may have forgotten in our hurry. Prayer of this nature allows us to also ask ourselves the existential question, which is more important, not to be late or the people I am waiting for. Instead of watching ourselves self-destruct, we can peacefully sit back and be filled with gratitude that the Lord has blessed us with our spouse and our children and all in between, our work, our life, our home. 
we can plan better next time and use the wonderful tool of communication with our spouse and our children to prevent these uncomfortable situations from recurring. Our Lord wants us to examine situations in our life that are opportunities for spiritual growth, times of impatience, anxiety, frustration, rejection that can lead us to holiness. Constant complaining can only make us ill. Remember, we have control over certain things and one of them is our emotion. Plants may go haywire, but we can still be in control if we let the Holy Spirit help us and guide us with the right disposition and direct us to the right solutions. In this Lent, let us thank God for not exhausting His patience with us, for leading us to today, despite our many years of taking Him for granted, to find time and the opportunity to repent, to be more patient, and to grow in holiness. Let us pray in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, when my view of life is just merely that of a race, that is the time when I need your grace. When life becomes a race to achieve, help me to realize the many lessons patience can conceive. Thank you, Lord, for being patient with me. This I pray and thank you for in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.